Once upon a time in a land far, far away, there lived a wealthy merchant and his three beautiful daughters. The third one, though, was far prettier and wiser than the others, so everyone called her Beauty. On the other hand, her sisters were jealous and mean. They were more interested in spending their father's money. Beauty used to dream about a handsome prince. She always thought that one day she will marry the prince and stay in a beautiful palace with him. Everything was happy in Beauty's life like her dreams. And one day, her fate changed. Due to a terrible storm, her father lost all his ships and so all his money. It's all over, dear. We are no longer wealthy. Don't worry, father. All will be fine soon. We will find a way out of it. You are my only wealth. I'm happy with you. Soon, all the servants left the house because of Merton's poverty. Beauty was running the house, while the two sisters kept complaining about how they were living in poverty. Beauty always prayed to God to bring back the happiness on his father's face. And one day, the merchant received the news that one of his ships was sailing into the harbor. I have good news. One of my ships has sailed into the harbor. We shall be no more poor. Ah. Right now I have to leave for the harbor. Tell me, what shall I get for each of you? I want new dresses. I want jewelry. And what shall I get for you, my lovely child? All I want is your safe return home, father. So sweet of you. But you must ask for whatever you want, my child. Um, the Scarlet Rose. Please get me just one. Of course, my sweet child. On this happy note, the merchant left for the harbor. As he reached the harbor, he saw the ship was completely isolated and found out that all the crew ran off with the remaining cargo of the ship. Broken-hearted, the merchant started his journey towards home. Lost in thought, the merchant wandered off the road and lost into a dense forest. The snow was falling like all the ocean water had turned to snow. The horse was not able to walk in the dense snow, so he let him rest under a tree. In the distance, he saw some bright lights and went towards it. It was a huge, beautiful palace. As he reached it, the gate made of shining gold swung open. It seemed very strange that no snow had fallen in the avenue of orange trees. Oh, what a beautiful place this is. I must enter the palace and meet the king of this palace. The merchant made his way through the great hall. The merchant waits and looks around to see someone to come in. But after a long wait, no one came to the place. Hello? Is someone there in the palace? Hello? There was a dining table with a fresh meal of dainty cakes and fruits. I think I should start eating myself. Later I will thank that considerate host, whoever it may be. He lost Ooh. no time in finishing his meal. After he eats his fill, he went upstairs. He opens the first door and saw a room with a nice clean bed. Oh my God, it seems I was due for some good luck. The merchant opens his eyes to a bright new day. He found a new pair of clothes ready for him. He prepares himself and went down to the hall. The breakfast was ready on the table. Milk, fresh juices, and breads. He eats to his fill and gets up. Uh, hello? Is anybody here? Thank you for your hospitality. You are so generous. I am leaving now. Bye-bye. As he stepped out, 
he saw as many roses as the eye can see. Oh, the scarlet rose. Well, I can take this for my beauty. He promptly approaches the garden and picks out a rose. As soon as he plucked a rose, there was a loud growling sound behind him. As he turns around, he was standing in front of a tall monster with blood red eyes, teeth and claws sharp as a knife. Who told you to gather my roses? Was it not enough that I sheltered you in my palace? This is the way you show your gratitude? Your insolence shall not go unpunished. Go, spare me, merciful Lord. I thought that the generous master who gave me food and lodging in my time of need wouldn't mind if I took only one of the roses for my daughter. Forgive me, my Lord. Daughter. Hmm. Well, I have an offer for you then that can save your life. What is that, my Lord? I am ready to do anything for you. My three daughters must be waiting for me now. Hmm, three daughters. Okay, bring one of your daughters to this palace. I shall keep her, and in exchange, you will be granted uh, your uh, freedom. I promise, I promise. I'm sure one of them will surely come to you. Very well. I'll give you one of my fastest stallions, and I'll give you a month to return here with your daughter. If she comes at all, she must come willingly. On no other condition, I'll have her. If you do not show up after a month, I will come to find you. Leave now and take one rose for your daughter. Though he had accepted this proposal <laughs> initially to save his life, he did not really think that any of his daughters would be persuaded to come. The poor merchant, more dead than alive, went back. The horse rode swiftly and reached the merchant's cottage in no time. His daughters rushed to meet him. Oh, Daddy, give me my gift. Where is my gift, Daddy? How are you, Daddy? You must be tired. Here is what you asked me to bring for you, mm -hmm. and you don't know what it has cost. He told them about his ships and the beast. <sighs> it was your fault. Why would you ask him to bring flowers? Yes, if you had asked for something sensible, this would never have happened. I have indeed caused this misfortune. I will therefore go back with Father to keep his promise. Oh, beauty. <laughs> I'm so sorry, dear. I brought you this entire bad fate. As I did the deed, it is only right that I should suffer for it. Beauty was firm on her decision. She encouraged and cheered her father. Go back home, Beauty. Don't spoil your life. I have enough courage to face this situation. While they were talking, the night fell. To their great surprise, all the forest was illuminated like the entire universe was welcoming her. Whoa, it's amazing. Soon they reached the road of orange trees and saw that the castle was brilliantly lighted. When they reached the great hall, they found a splendid fire burning and the table richly spread with a delicious meal. They were very hungry after the long travel, so both started eating the meal. But they had hardly finished their meal when the noise of the beast's footsteps was heard approaching. <gasps> Good evening, beauty. Good evening, majesty. So, have you come willingly? Yes. Will you be staying here when your father goes away? Yes. Go back to your horse. You will find another horse loaded with trunks full of gold, which is for you and the rest of your daughters. Farewell, beauty. I'll miss you every day, dear. <laughs> I will miss you, daddy. The horse took off and in an instant disappeared in the distance. 
Go upstairs. Take some rest. Good night. Good night. Beauty opened the first door and found a beautifully decorated room. She lay down on the bed and instantly fell asleep. When she got up in the morning, she found her dressing table set out with everything she could possibly want. She found her lunch in the great hall. After the lunch, she sat down cozily in the corner of a sofa. Will this horrible beast keep me a prisoner forever? How can I set myself free? Thinking and thinking about this, again she fell asleep. It was the evening time. She heard the beast coming. Good evening, beauty. Good evening. Do you love me, beauty? Will you marry me? Huh? Say yes or no without fear. Oh no. Since you will not. Good night, beauty. Good night. She was very glad to find her refusal had not provoked him. Every evening after supper, the beast came to see her and always before saying good night asked her, "Beauty, will you marry me?" And when she said, "Oh no." He went away quite sad. As time passed by, Beauty was no longer afraid of Beast since he was always kind to her. Living in the palace was so much fun for Beauty. She amused herself in the garden. There were fountains, orange trees, myrtle trees, and the birds. Even the beast sometimes played the piano for Beauty and had long chats with her. So everything went on for a long time. Until at last, Beauty began to long for the sight of her father and sisters. Her look very sad. The beast asked her, "What's the matter, dear? You look so sad nowadays." I long to see my father again. Please let me go only for a week to see him. I promise to come back to you. Ah, beauty, is it because you hate me that you want to escape? No, it's not that. I do not hate you. And I should be very sorry to leave you for some time. I cannot refuse you anything you ask, even though it should cost me my life. If you do not come in good time, you will find me dead. Oh, dear! I'll never let this happen. You are always kind to me. You will not need any chariot to travel. Wear this ring and sleep. Fear nothing. Sleep peacefully. And you shall see your father when you wake up. Oh, really? Thank you, thank you so much. And when you wish to come back, remove this ring from your finger, and you will find yourself in the palace again. Good night, beauty. I will miss you a lot. Good night, dear, and thank you for your kindness. <sighs> Just remember your promise. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> As soon as the beast left, Beauty hastened to sleep. The next morning, she found herself in her own house's bed. Her sisters were astonished at her magical appearance. Father hugged her so tightly and started crying with happiness. Oh, Beauty, I was so worried for you. I missed you very much, dear. I miss you too, Daddy. Beauty told her father about the beast's kindness. After much consideration, he replied, "You tell me yourself that the beast loves you dearly, and deserves your love and gratitude for his gentleness and kindness. I think you ought to reward him by doing as he wishes, in spite of his ugliness." 
A week slipped by, and Beauty forgot all about returning to the castle. Until one night, she dreamed that the beast was lying on the ground, dying. Oh my god! Beauty was so terrified by this dream, that very evening she said goodbye to her father and her sisters. As soon as she was in bed, she removed her ring. Then she fell asleep instantly and woke up in the beast's palace in the morning. She rushed to the spot where she had seen the beast dying. The beast was still there and wasn't moving much. Oh my God, is he really dead? <laughs> it's my fault to leave you alone, dear. But then, looking at him again, she realized he was still breathing. Hastily fetching some water, she sprinkled it over his face. And to her great delight, he began to revive. Oh, dear, how you frightened me. I never knew how much I loved you until just now, when I feared I was too late to save your life. Can you really love such an ugly creature as I am? Yes, I see you have a kind and gentle heart, and that is more than I can ask for in life. Beauty, will you marry me? Yes, I will. As soon as Beauty spoke, the beast gets covered in a blinding light and then floats into the air and descends back again as the charming prince. Oh my God, you are the prince of my dreams. I always dream of you. Ah, Beauty, my sweet Beauty. Thank you for releasing me from a terrible curse. A witch I killed in the battle placed a curse upon me when she was dying. She cursed me that nobody could ever love me and turned me into a terrible beast. But you have broken the curse with your true love. Oh, I can't believe what is happening now. Am I dreaming? The beast softly pinched oh, her. Ouch! It's not a dream. You are my real prince, my true love. <laughs> <laughs> now we should wait no more. Let's go to your home and prepare your family for our wedding dance. <laughs> so she did. <laughs> and the marriage was celebrated the very next day with the utmost splendor. Finally, the kindness won over the beauty. Beauty isn't about having a pretty face. It is about having a pretty mind a pretty heart, and most importantly, a beautiful soul. The beauty and the prince lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs>